Welcome. In this video, I'm going to go over this problem. So a fair coin is tossed repeatedly. So by fair coin, we mean one side has heads and one side has tails and both are equally likely. So they each have a one half probability of occurring. We're going to find the probability that this coin comes up heads for the first time after an even number of coin flips. So really quickly, let's just write this. This is flip one, flip two, flip three, flip four, and actually I want to fit in up to six flips just to talk about what's going on here. That'll give us a better idea of how to set this up. Flip five and flip six. Do, 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 do. Okay, so now let's see what could happen under the first one. Well, we definitely would not want this one to come up heads. It would want to be tails. But on the second one, we'd have flipped our coin twice already at this point. So it would be one half squared. So this would be the equivalent of getting like tails then heads. That would be this one here. Okay, so then what about on the third one? By the third one, we flipped one half here, one half here, and then another one half. But we don't care about the third one, we care about the fourth one. So now suddenly I have one half to the fourth power here. Can you guess what I'd have after the sixth flip? Yep, I'd have one half to the sixth power, because again, all this one would be one half, one half, one half, one half, one half, one half and multiply all of these probabilities together. So times, 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 times would be one half to the sixth power. And that'd be like getting tails, 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 tails. That's one, two, three, four, five. And then on the sixth one, getting heads. That's what we're representing here for the sixth flip. So we only care about all of these. And in fact, these all have to be added up separately because what this first one tells us, we got tails, then heads. What this one tells us that we got tails, 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 heads. And again, we already showed you what this one was, five tails and a heads. But then we could go up to eight flips. What if we get seven tails? One, two, three, four, five, six, oops, seven, then a heads. Then suddenly we're one half to the eighth power because that's our eighth flip. So let's add all these up. We have one half squared plus one half to the fourth. And I'm going to leave some space here on purpose, plus one half to the sixth plus one half to the eighth. And I'll stop there. Now this looks like an infinite series. So let's just take one more step and rewrite. This is one to the four, one over fourth plus one over 16. That's one over 64 plus, I think the next one is one over 256, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that looks right, one over 256. So what do all of these have in common? Well, they all have a one fourth in common. So let's see if we can get something to work out. They all have a one fourth. So I'm going to factor that out that one fourth. And we're going to add these up starting at n equals one to infinity. And we want to multiply by something. So if I take out one to the fourth here, I am left with one plus one over four plus one over four squared, because that would be 16. So in case you don't see this, this would be one over 16, which is just one over four squared plus um, one over 64, which is one over four cubed. So let me go ahead and make that change, just so you can see this one is four squared, four cubed. Hmm, I'm starting to see a little more of a pattern here. This part represents n equals one. This is our n equals two, n equals three, n equals four, And we keep going. So it looks when like when n equals one, we want one to the fourth raised to some power to give us one. And the only way to do that is to have one to the fourth to the n minus one power. And let's see if this works. One over four, actually I'll just do, I'll see if I can get a one. So one over four to the one minus one is just one. In this case, one over four to the two minus one is just one fourth. One over four to the three minus one is just one over 16 or four squared. And this works one over four to the four minus one is one over four cubed. Wonderful, so this is how to compute that probability. And what does that look like? That's a geometric series. And so of course, when you have a geometric series, we can figure out this sum um, because this is our A. Let me make it a different color. This here is my A, and this is my R. And the sum of a geometric series is as follows. So generally, if you have 
the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of a times r to the n minus 1 power, this ends up being a to the 1 minus r. And of course, we want the absolute value of r to be less than 1, which we have since r, r equals 1 fourth. So we definitely meet this criteria. So in this case, this sum, and I'm going to erase some of this work I have on top to make some space because I'm running out of space here. So I'm just going to leave the summation. There we go. Bear with me. And to save time, I'm not going to edit this the way I normally do, mostly because I want to just get this hint up. Well, not even hint. I want to get this up so you all can see it. So my A is 1 over 4 over 1 minus 1 over 4. So now let's figure this out. This is 1 over 4 divided by 4 over 4 minus 1 over 4. So 1 over 4 divided by 3 over 4. So 1 over 4 times 4 over 3, or 1 third. Or you can just write this as 0 0.3 repeating, or 0 0.333, and stop at however many threes you want. So hopefully this helps. So this is the probability that a coin comes up heads for the first time after an even number of rolls.